Welcome, everyone. Uh, the Drush maintainers are happy to talk to you guys about what's new for Drush 6. Little introductions. My name is Moshe Weitzman. I'm a longtime Drupal developer, uh, currently the director of research and development at Acquia. I want to introduce uh, two co-presenters. Jonathan Hedstrom, uh, further away from me, is the director of engineering at Open Sorcery and the maintainer of Drush Make. Um, closer here, Owen Barton, director of engineering at Civic, Civic Actions um, and maintainer of a bunch of different pieces. Uh, you'll hear about uh, completion, uh, Drush completion or bash completion um, and site set and uh, different other pieces that Owen has worked on. So the first um, major feature in Drush 6 is called output formats. All right, so just about all of the commands in Drush are now um, able to be formatted as you wish. Um, the output from there um, can be formatted with uh, JSON or CSV um, or INI, uh, lots of different formats, YAML. Um, those are the formatters that we ship with. In addition, you're welcome to write your own plugins uh, with other formatters, okay? So the way that manifests is that you run a command. Uh, let's say it's pm-list, which lists out which of your modules are enabled and which aren't, and what version they're at, and all of that sort of thing. Um, you can say dash dash format equals csv-list, and then you're gonna get a CSV listing, okay? Um, this is really handy when you're taking data out of your Drupal site and you're reusing it in a script. Um, you can now get it in just the way that's useful for you. Okay. Um, if you are authoring Drush commands, uh, all you really have to do, um, you have to do two things. You remove the part of your command where you print out your data um, and instead just return that data back in your command callback. Um, Drush will then take care of taking that data and presenting it to the user the way the user asked for it, okay? Um, so it's, it's removing a line from your command callback. The other thing you have to do is in your command definition, I'll show you in a second, you have to add a little section to the array that tells Drush which formats you support um, and what your default format is. If you wanna learn more about um, output formats, we have a topic in Drush if you guys haven't explored the topic command, it's really useful. There's a ton of great documentation about Drush there. Um, you don't have to like Google all over the place to find out things. Uh, just run Drush topic. When you run Drush topic, it tells you all of the topics that uh, the authors have written, and uh, it's a little bit like man. Um, really useful. So uh, if you want to go directly to the topic about output formats, you can see it at the end of the slide there. Uh, Drush topic, docs, dash output, dash formats. Okay, so here's an excerpt of the command definition for the version command. This command is super simple. It just tells you what version your Drush is, okay? Um, in addition to saying what arguments and options your command supports, you have a new array key called output formats. Um, it has two elements inside of it the default and the pipe format. Okay, default tells you um, if someone doesn't specify a format, here's how Drush should output the data. In this case, it's in a key value format. And if someone pass passes dash dash pipe, um, this instructs Drush to format it as just a string, okay? Um, dash dash pipe is um, it exists on most of our commands, and it's kind of like a handy way to get machine-readable output without having to think about what format you want it in. It's just give it to me in a format that makes sense. That's what dash dash pipe is about. It would be, in, the, in this case, a version, it would be the equivalent of passing dash dash format equals string. Okay, so let's give you a little demo of output formats.
Can you guys see that okay? Oh, is it? It's too low, I see. Oh, it just looks good for me. Okay. All right, so the command I typed, you can see it down there at the bottom, pm-list, and I gave it a format, okay? If I do it without a dash dash format, I get it in its standard table presentation, okay? So that's an example of passing format, getting it back in the format you need. <coughs> Whoa. Um, so that's a big uh, JSON array, okay? Um, so that's output formats. Um, let's see if I can uh, get the Google example going that I had before. Okay, so this command that I just did is going to be a little hard for you to read because there's a lot of stuff there. Um, I use the command SQL Q, okay, which means execute this query against my Drupal site. And Drush takes care of how to connect to the database for this site and so forth. Um, and um, I passed um, some instructions, dash, dash, extra, to my SQL that said I wanted tab delimited um, formatting for my SQL query, all right? The query I sent was simply give me the names and email addresses of the users from the users table. And then I went ahead and um, saved that to a temporary file and then uploaded that file to Google Spreadsheets, all right? And so, I love it, Ezra. You're <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so uh, there was a question to see the command again. Let's do it like this. There. Um, so you'll see the SQL queue at the beginning, then a query. Um, and then it saves to temp.tab file. And then there's ampersand, ampersand, and then the command Google Docs upload of that file. This command Google comes from an open source project called Google CL. Um, and it seems to work. I started using it yesterday, and it looks pretty cool. All right, thanks. Um, now you can mostly get it, right? Okay, I'm on it. Okay, so there's only one user in my users table, but there is that user, okay? Now you can clap, Ezra. <laughs> Um, this works for other commands. I guess we can try one more after I narrow my terminal. Okay, so what I did was I ran pm-list again, which is that listing of um, modules and what their status is on this website. This is a Drupal 7 site. And I redirected that to a file and sent it to Google command to be uploaded. Hmm. I, I think it didn't like that tab delimited. I should have done... Uh, I, I uploaded it with a .tab instead of a .csv file name, so that wasn't perfect, but there is a document here.
All right, next feature um, that's new in Drush 6. Um, we had a, a bunch of user commands in Drush 5. We added a full set of role commands, okay? What you can do with the roles is you can um, create, update, uh, list, delete um, uh, for roles, and you can also add and remove permissions from those roles. And uh, like you've had for a little while, you can add and remove users from roles. Um, so there's really a good set of uh, role-related stuff here. And I'll just give you a quick demo of that. It's still so swell drawing. Administrate. Oh, user is still here. Is that singular? Oh, good. Okay. The error handling could be better there. Um, so what I typed, um, dr wrap, which is short for role dash add dash permission. Um, you take the role that you want to operate on, authenticated user is the role, and the permission is access administration pages. So I just added the permission to the role. Um, this is a local site, so doing something silly like this doesn't make any difference. Um, and if you want to remove it, I think it's RMP, yeah. Removed access administration's pages permission from the authenticated user role. All right. All right. Uh, so Drush 6 um, is the first version to start supporting Drupal 8. Um, we built in pretty nice support for the CMI subsystem, the configuration management subsystem. All right, so I'm going to show you one command out of a suite of commands that have to do with config. Let's see, this terminal window doesn't meet spec. Uh, I have my drush command alias to just dr. That's why that's working. All right, so I entered the command cedit, which is short for config-edit. Um, what this does is it takes any config file in your site and brings it up in your editor. You can go ahead and change it, and then it saves it back into Drupal. Um, this is actually like a fairly convoluted process in CMI. Um, you need to use the staging directory to stage your file, um, change a manifest, and import it into Drupal. Uh, Drush handles all of that for you. So this is actually quite a um, time savings to go ahead and do this. One second, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, okay, so if you pass C edit without any arguments, it offers you a listing of files that you might wanna edit. My Drupal site has 134 files, config files. Um, so we can just pick one. Um, let's say I'll pick the last one, which is the tracker view. All right, views is in Drupal 8 um, for people who didn't hear. All views are stored in the configuration system. They're CMI files. So instead of going to that nice UI, you can go to your editor. So let's check it out. I typed in number 134. I want to just edit this view. I don't recommend creating a view this way, um, but editing a view can be really handy. <coughs> if I want to change the number of items per page, I save it, close it, and um, in great Unix fashion, it succeeded. I got no feedback. Um, but I do know it succeeded because if I try it again, 
I'm running C edit. I'm going to pick the same file, 134. And now there's 50 items per page. Okay, so all your configuration in your site is easily managed um, just with C edit. You can pop open the files, change them, and it gets imported back into your site. All right, Benji. Oh, the editor, yeah, I think it does. I think it does. I think there's some equivalent to the editor um, function that, that Windows has. Yeah. Um, okay, keep going. Here's a Dr Drush 5 um, innovation that I just don't think a lot of people know about or use, so I want to mention it again. Uh, we added something called shell aliases to Drush. Um, so in your Drush RC file, which is your configuration file for Drush, you can set up a simple array um, of short names and what command they might map to. Okay, This is completely analogous to git aliases in git's configuration file. Um, so here's two examples. Uh, I have a command, Drush non-core, all right, which I invented. Um, it, it resides on my system, and it maps to pm-list-no-core. All right. Again, another one, pull db, um, executes two different commands. The first one is a git pull, and the second one is a drush up db, which updates my database. So get my new code and run all my pending updates. All right. This um, exclamation point at the beginning of the word git uh, tells drush that uh, this is not a drush command coming up. It's actually just execute this as raw bash. Okay. Here you can see um, the shell aliases array in my Drush RC file, and you can see just how easy it is to add and remove things there, okay? Because it's defined in Drush RC file, um, it's not only for personal use. You can put Drush RC files up on a server in a shared location so all your Unix users are going to share uh, the same aliases. Um, you can also put aliases into your Drupal site, into your Git if you want to, and share them there. So uh, there's definitely lots of different ways that teams can share site aliases as well. All right, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan for Drush Make. How many people here are familiar with Drush Make? Awesome. All right, so I'm going to cover, well, first I'll go over what Drush Make is. It's essentially allows you to create a manifest of the themes, modules, and libraries that your site needs in order <coughs> to run. So here we have an example, just a very quick one, showing you, know, you can specify a version of a module. You can patch modules. Um, so we have views and C tools. Um, is sort of an alternative, or the way we use it anyway, is an alternative to storing big blobs of contributed code redundantly in our own um, Git repositories. Instead, we just store the make file, which gives Drush everything it needs to pull down the code to build out the Drupal site. Um, there were some really, in Drush 5, we introduced Drush make into Drush. It was previously a separate project. Um, in Drush 5, there were several really cool uh, innovations. One of them is concurrent downloads. So if you have, say, 100 modules and you specify a concurrency of 20, it'll download 20 modules at a time. Um, the other really big win in Drush 5, or yeah, in Drush 5 was uh, caching. So instead of actually downloading Drupal 7.22, you know, 20 times a day, it'll download it once, and then the next time you need to download it, you'll have it cached locally. That also works with Git. Um, if you're not using a working copy, the cache will use uh, git reference cache to store the repository, and then when the next time you run the drush make file, it will look if there's any upstream commits and pull those down. So that saves a lot of time, particularly, uh, particularly with Drupal core, which is now quite a big git clone. Um, right in the okay. Were you guys able to hear any of the stuff I just said? Okay. Um, <laughs> 
So I'm going to talk about things that are new in 6 now, and a lot of these have actually been backported to 5. Um, there's now the ability to use local patches, um, and the patch itself is actually copied straight into the project directory. Um, for most use cases, I would uh, encourage people not to use local patches because at a certain point you get into basically having a forked or hacked module, but there are some legitimate use cases. You know, For instance, if you need a custom HT access file, that's a really good use case for a local patch. And um, with the copying into place, if someone in the future decides they're not going to use Drush Make anymore, you still have that patch accessible. Um, this is a subtle change, um, the ability to use a distribution as a core version. Previously, what happened is you would specify the version of core you wanted to use, and Drush Make would grab that as a separate process, and then it would build your uh, distribution. The reason um, this change was necessary is, um, even though this is shortened to Kickstart here, this, is, uh, this was introduced uh, by Damien for Commerce Kickstart. And in the, pr the previous way it worked, if you had core patches that were necessary for your distribution, Drush Make wouldn't grab those. You would have to re-specify them. Um, by doing it this way, when you specify a distribution as a version of core, you no longer have to redundantly specify those core patches. Um, so you could, you know, this code you're seeing right here would download all of the modules necessary to run Commerce Kickstart, and then if you wanted a few more modules, you'd just add those below or if you wanted a different theme or some new uh, jQuery libraries. Quick Drupal, uh, which I think Owen is gonna demonstrate, basically allows you to download Drupal, spin it up uh, with a, without Apache, it just runs its own little HTTP server. Um, in Drush 6 now, you can use a make file with Quick Drupal, so you could build out a bunch of modules and then just type Drush QD and then point it at the right make file. It would download everything it needs, run a site install, and you'd be up and running in a browser. Um, Drush, has, Drush Make has long had the ability to specify a working copy, meaning if you have a bunch of Git repos, you know, say you're actively working on some modules, it would pull down the Git repository itself, so you could go in there and then you know, make patches against modules. In Drush 6, you can now the, specify in the make file that you want specific projects to be working copies and others not to be. Um, so, you know, in this case, if you were working on a module called CAP, which we shortened to make the slide fit, um, this would download an, an active Git repo and you could make patches or commits if you had access to do that. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, I, for people who have been working with make files for a long time and wanting to store contrib modules in a separate subdirectory called contrib, you used to have to do it the way it's done there at the bottom where each project had a subdirectory of contrib. You can now do in one line at the top of your file set project defaults, um, which basically cut the size of make files in half. Um, so I like that one a lot. And I believe that's awesome. Owen. You guys see that? Raise this up a little bit. Okay. So uh, I was going to start off by by demoing Quick Drupal and Run Server, uh, which you were, if you were in Denver, you uh, you may have seen before. But uh, I think a lot of people still don't know about this, and it's pretty handy. So um, just explain what these two things are. So uh, Quick Drupal is essentially uh, if you've used like Simply Test Me. Do you, you guys know about that? It's like a web service. You can demo a module very quickly. It's a little bit like that, except it's, it's purely driven by Drush. So uh, uh, it, it takes a lot of shortcuts. Um, so for example, by default, it uses SQLite. Um, so everything ends up in one directory. You don't have to like clean up my SQL databases. Um, it, uh, it, has a, it, it, it can use the, the built-in uh, web server. So that's what uh, core run server or RS is. 
And you can run this on any site. You don't have to use it with Quick Drupal. I'm just showing them at the same time because they use each other. So uh, run server is, uh, uses either the PHP CGI binary, uh, which is uh, available on, on a lot of systems, not all of them, um, or it also works with a built-in web server in PHP 5.4. Um, so if you have either of those, you should be able to use this. Uh, it's super easy to use. Uh, if you're used to like setting up a vhost every time you, you add a site, you no longer need to do that. You just CD into the site directory or use an alias and just do RS, and it pops up a, a web server right there. So let me just show, show you what these look like. So I'm just gonna go into temp. Uh, you know, quick, quick Drupal, I would say, is it's not, it's not a substitute for Make. Make is designed primarily for building things you care about, you wanna keep. You know, it's potentially production, you're gonna do work on it. Quick Drupal is more, much more around something throwaway, or something, you, you know, it's, I, I originally conceived it as, as something that might, might be useful for training. So, you know, somebody who's new to Drupal has to learn not only Drupal, but, you know, they're learning Apache vhost, they're learning, you know, MySQL, they're learning file permissions, they're learning all this stuff, whereas it would be nice if people just had to install, you know, a working PHP and could just run one command and start learning Drupal, rather than learning all this other stuff. So, um, to, uh, to run it, you just run qu drush qd. I'm gonna show a slightly more advanced one, uh, command, so you can give it a site name. I'm just gonna call it demo. If you don't give it a site name, it, it just uses a timestamp directory. Um, and if you want, you can give it a, a, any number of contra modules. So I'm just gonna use admin menu. So let's say I wanna show somebody, hey, you, you've never seen admin menu, let me show you this. Uh, this will include admin menu. But it also works for uh, distributions, the themes, and it will enable them if it, if it can work out the name. So if I just run that, it's downloaded Drupal. Actually, it's using the cache Drupal. It's installing it. I'm just gonna move in my browser window here so you can see. And that pops up. Okay, it's enabling the module. It's starting the web server. And there's my site. So pretty handy. Like no configuration, no dependencies. It doesn't need to know your root password. You know, that's the whole thing is it it's, takes away a lot of the hassle of, of you know, just building a, 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 a quick Drupal site. Um, and you can see it shows the log of all the accesses. It will show errors on here. Uh, this will also show uh, if I just create a... Uh, uh, a node, you'll see if you look very quickly, I will scroll up, uh, so you'll see, there we go. So uh, it also captures watchdog, so uh, you know, it's really handy for watch for what watchdog. You don't have to go and like, you know, dig up your Apache logs, you have the window right there, it's always up being updating, it's like telling the, the, you know, the Apache or PHP logs as you go. Um, so it's pretty fun. Uh, uh, Quick Drupal has a whole ton of options. Uh, you know, it uses a whole bunch of commands under the surface. All of those commands, you can, you can alter the options if you want dev versions. If you want a particular install profile, you can choose that. Um, it works with like commerce, kickstart, you know, even pretty complex things that we'll work with. Uh, Run server has a couple of interesting options. Um, I think one of the main ones you may need to know about is the port. Um, so if you, it, it, by default, it'll come up on, what's that? Uh, I can't see, my, my browser window's too small. Uh, yeah, by default, it comes up on 8888, eight, four eights. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but you may wanna choose a different port. If you have you know, Java running on there or something, you can, you can put it into your own port. You can run multiple servers at a time on different ports if you have multiple sites you're working with. Okay, I'm gonna show something else. Is something I don't think we've demoed before, uh, but it's really super useful and something I'd use pretty much every day now. Uh, it's called the site set command. And what this does is, um, if you use, generally people use Drush in either one of two ways. They change directory into the sites directory and sometimes into the site slash something or other directory so that Drush picks the right site, or they use aliases and every single command they have to retype the alias. and you know, neither of those is really great. Um, 
especially retyping the alias. I mean, it's kind of a disincentive to use aliases, whereas this makes it using aliases really simple if you're doing a lot of work. So um, essentially, it persists a site. So uh, if I, I'm just going to do go straight into the demo here. Uh, so if I, uh, can you guys see my, let me close my browser. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm just in temp and I just do drush status, I don't get anything back, right? I'm not, I'm not using an active site. I'm just using drush on its own. If I run site set, So I'm going to run site set local. So at, lo at local is a is a local alias. So this is something I have set up in my Drush RC. And now if I run, oops, Drush, Drush, Drush status, uh, you'll see I'm in my site. You know, I've got my you know database. I've got theme. I can see everything. So now if I'm running commands, I'm running them on this site. Uh, and those of you who are observing carefully will observe the. Uh, the site alias is in my prompt. Now this is super, super important, especially if you do site set on a production site. Because if you do site set on a production site, it's very easy to forget that you're working on a production site and accidentally do drush site install or something like that and you'll have a phone call very quickly <laughs> and it won't be a good one. So uh, so it integrates with your prompt and, and this is really, I'd say, pretty much a prerequisite for using this at all. Um, you can see I use uh, I have it here. I, basically, the, the command to use this is uh, you put something like this in your uh, in your bash RC, and it calls. Essentially, this is the standard prompt. Uh, you know, host name and username and whatever. It's pretty cryptic looking, uh, but then we, you call this under under drush ps1 function, and what that does is it it looks up the active site. And these, I should say, these sites are uh, active per terminal session. So if you have a bunch of tabs open, it's not site-wide, right? So you're going to have one tab that's set to your local site and one site that's set to your QA site. So you can do a commit, you know, push it, you know, pull on the QA site and run features revert. And uh, so it's per, per terminal window. Like, it looks at the process IDs and works out what that is. So if I put this, this is what this prompt looks like. Um, so I've got my, my prompt in square brackets here. Um, to get this function, you also need to have the drush.complete.sh in your bash RC. Um, if, you, if you want to use autocompletion, you should already have this. Uh, it's super helpful. Um, so you just saw, so you can put a dot, and then you put the path to your drush.complete.sh. Um, and just to demo, I'll see if my network works, but this does work with remote aliases as well. So here I'm, this is a remote alias. If I do drush status on here, this is not run, running locally. You can see it's taking a little bit longer. And yeah, you can see this is, this is the live, this is a production site. So. Uh, that's Drush set. Does it work with the URI? Yep. Yeah, it work. It should work with pretty much any command. It, it, it any any command that works remotely should work fine. Uh, when you're done, uh, you do Drush site reset, and it goes away. So, uh, pretty straightforward, easy to use. Make sure you set up the prompt. Um, there's another one, uh, the Drush user login command, or ULI, most people call you run ULI, uh, and you run ULI a lot. I pretty much always use ULI every time I get to a site. Um, and we've added some, some things to this that make it a lot faster, um, and just a lot cooler. So, um, so I'm going to site set to local, and uh, if you've never used the ULI command, what you'll used to, uh, so I'm just going to log out here, otherwise it's not really showing very much. Oh, actually, I'm in a different site anyway. So uh, it, what, what it, what it pre previously showed, if you use ULI and Drush 5, is it just prints the link to log into the site, to, you know, this is the password reset link. And 
So now I, if I do brush ULI, it doesn't only print, it prints the link, but it also opens the site in a browser and logs me in. So, um, but it does a couple of other things. So I can do drush ULI. You can pass in the user, user ID. So you can do a number, you can do a name, you can do an email address, any kind of user identifier. And then you could put in a path. So admin, content, node, for example. So if I do this, it's gonna log me in and put me in this path. So let me just log out. Uh, it works even if you're not logged out, but. Log in, you can see it redirects, and I'm on admin, admin content node. So super handy, you wanna go, you don't wanna like log into the site and then have to browse around four, four links down, you can just type the path you wanna get to. Um, okay, that's how we're doing for time. So I've got time to demo completion here, I think we do. Yeah, we got time. So uh, completion, Again, this is something I demoed, uh, we demoed in Denver. Uh, the, this has one piece of setup, which I already mentioned, which is in making sure the drush.complete.sh file is sourced in your bash RC. Um, and that makes available a completion function that calls drush um, when, you, when you type a command starting with drush. So let me just show what that looks like. So um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with completion. Basically, you just type tab. Um, let's see, yeah, I just do S. So it's gonna show me all the commands that start with S. SI, tab, SIT, so it knows that if it starts with SIT, it's gonna be a site dash something command, but then it then asks me which ones. So I can continue. Um, so this works for pretty much everything. It works for aliases, it works for commands, it works for options, and it works for most command arguments as well. Um, and it's pretty easy, there's a, there's a hook you can include in your command files to provide completion uh, for, for that command. And essentially you just provide a list of all possible arguments to that command. Um, and the reason for that is, is Drush caches all, of, all the completions, so that if you're working in a site and it takes you know, a couple of seconds to bootstrap that site, that's kind of annoying if it has to do that every time you want to complete. So we, we cache all the completion date output so the next time you hit tab, which is normally a second later, it's almost instant. So uh, the other thing with completion is, is the options. Um, rather than list every option everywhere, um, which is you know, a little unwieldy, what we decide is we, we put global options first so these are all, you know, global options. So we've got, you know, the root and debug and so on. And then if we go, uh, let me use ULI. If we go after the command, we only show the command specific options. This is the same setup as git uses. So if you used to git, uh, this will come pretty naturally. So you can you can complete the net the the command that way. Um, oh, did I close the window? Oh, it's, uh, it's popped up back here. So, I think that's it for com completion. Uh, should we, sh yeah, let's have questions. If you could please uh, come and line up for the mic. Thanks very much. All right, just before the first question, just one second. Um, I wanna let everyone know that there's a group doing, um, doing support for the Oklahoma tornado disaster, okay? Room B119 is where you can go if you wanna help out. Uh, coders are kind of getting ride board set up and other things like that, so uh, if you're inspired, please go join that team. Go ahead. So is this, so is this stable enough to just be used as just our main Drush, or is, do we still want to use Drush 5 usually? Okay, good question. Um, you know, I can say that all the Drush maintainers definitely use um, the uh, master branch or the 8.6 branch all the time. In general, um, I would say Drush is stable um, to stay that way. 
definitely for Dresh 6, I would encourage it now to go ahead and start using Dresh 6. Um, we did a, if you want a stable release, there is a beta one out, you could use that, or you could just stay with us um, on the branch. Up to you, but I would say it's ready. Hi, um, lots of cool stuff here. Um, I've been working with the new Drush ULI thing, and I have kind of a question, I guess. Um, is it possible to disable the browser firing up automatically? Because I use multiple browsers, and it's, it opens in the browser I don't want it to open in, because I dev in a different browser. So yep. yeah, it yeah. is possible. So, uh, so there was a, a, brow a dash dash browser flag. Okay. And probably what you want to do is uh, set that in your Drush RC, okay. if you always want to use a particular browser. I would say also it, it generally picks up like the system browser the best it can. Yeah, that's what it's so doing. So <laughs> if your if your system browser browser is set correctly, it will it will use that. Um, okay. And of course you can do dash dash browser equals Firefox or dash dash browser equals Chrome or Chromium or whatever you want, and it will use that for a particular command. If you awesome. Want to Thanks. Do that. Yeah. I had a question about um, uh, the Drush site set. Is it actually changing to that active local dev directory, or is it running an alias behind the scenes the whole time? It, so, uh, so the way it works is we, we basically we store a file in the temporary directory that's keyed by the parent process of Drush. So in other words, the process of your bash right. that you're, you're interactive in. Uh, so it, it, and then when you run Dr whenever you run a Drush command, it goes, is there, a, is there an environment file for this process? Cool. And if there is, it'll use that. So it's like, it's like typing the alias in the command name, right. um, but it's transparent. You don't need to be in the directory. You don't need to be on the same host even. Cool. And then the second question was, could you show us a little more about what your unsuck alias was? <laughs> it kind of got cut off. Yeah, okay, so there's an alias that actually comes with Drush um, called unsuck, and it disables the dashboard and the overlay modules. Um, I thought so, but I couldn't see the rest of it. So, so that's yeah. in the array by default? It is in the shell aliases array that's commented out in example.drushrc.php, yeah. Um, and the dashboard module is no longer in Drupal 8, so we got rid of one of them. Um, yeah, go ahead, next. So um, I went looking, and, and there is a, some BHAT Drush support, and I'm just wondering if you tested that with the, um, the new core server that's going ahead and running locally. I mean, can we essentially at this point do complete testing entirely from Drush? where it brings up its own web server, tests all the things against it, and basically comes back and says, yes, your commit did not go ahead and blow the site up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, sh you should be able to do that. You'll need, uh, you know, obviously it runs uh, as a persistent process, the web server, so you'll need a little bit of trickery. You know, you'll want to do it as a bash, a external bash script to bring up the server and then kill it afterwards. Um, but it should work, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's pretty solid. Um, you know, if you want to test in your, you know, environment very similar to your production environment, it's probably not ideal. You know, if this is a mission critical site, you want something, you know, a real staging environment. But for, yeah, for basic testing, like, you know, smoke testing, it's it's pretty good. And uh, uh, it doesn't, it, with simple test in particular, it doesn't complete all the, all the core simple tests. There's a few little deep internals of, of Drupal that don't pass in the, in the browser because of it's mostly like CGI environment settings. And I also should say, those also don't work in uh, an Apache configured with CGI either. So, <laughs> so it's a core issue, really. Hey, hopefully this is real quick, uh, sort of further to the first question. It's nice to know that it's stable and we can go ahead and use it and it's, uh, that you guys are using it sort of on a daily basis. Just wondering about backwards compatibility. A little while ago, it seemed you couldn't use Drush 6 uh, to maintain like a Drupal 6 site. Uh, and I wish we weren't, but we're still hosting some Drupal 6 sites. I was just curious about that. Yeah, so uh, Drush 6 is intended to work on both Drush 6 and Drush 7. So if you find six commands that aren't working, please file bugs. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect. Thanks. Hey, uh, this may just be me being daft, but uh, especially with site aliases, I've had trouble using shell aliases to combine multiple Drush commands. Are you able to do that? or? Um, you are able to do that, yes, so I can't think of a reason why they would fail, um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, I'd have to see what your errors were and try to figure out what's happening, but the, the intent is that you can, you know, separate mm -hmm. any commands, you know, with ampersands and it should work. 
All right, let's just use our, all right, thank you. Maybe, yeah. Are you thinking of, ch are you thinking of changing Drush Make to use uh, YAML syntax, you know, jump on the YAML bandwagon? Yeah, we were, we were talking about that yesterday and we'd like to do it, but we'd also like there to be a reason to do it. Uh, so people don't just have to rewrite all their make files, like if there was some, you know, big win by switching. So it's, it's on the list of ideas. Um, if I wanted to use Drush 6 uh, on a uh, make file that was generated with Drush 5, would that be backwards compatible? Yeah, we have not changed the API. It's Sweet. still API 2. Sorry, I came a little late, um, but I was wondering, is there a way to generate a make file where I'm basically going to say, always use git to as the download method and basically check against, because I'm using git as the download method and providing a revision that when I do a validation uh, for this that I'm actually using stable uh, commits that are maybe coming after a more stable release so that basically what's happening to me right now is I'm seeing um, security updates that I don't need for my site because of the way that I am downloading the modules. Um, generate, I believe there's an issue in the issue queue right now for generate make to do that, to set up your make file with a, you know, pointing at a git revision instead of checking out a version. Um, but that hasn't been committed yet. And I don't think there's a patch. I think there's some discussion about ways to make that work. Um, okay. But yeah, I'd encourage you to go look at that issue. And if you have more use cases or, you know, details on what you're trying to do, that would be great. Yeah, okay, great. Was your question about the generate make command or about make in general? It was two questions, really. It was generate make to potentially generate a make file in that fashion so that, say, distribution like Panoply that uses uh, specific branches of, you know, modules and things like that are, when installed, don't show up as, hey, this site has a bunch of mm. security errors and that, that was another issue. Oh, that one should have been fixed. There was a problem for a while where if you were using a git revision, it would write the version string as blank in the info file, which caused Drupal to really freak out about that module. Um, but it should now say, it's it should be the same as if you download a dev tarball. It should say, you know, 7.x, 1.1 plus 23 commits or something like that. So if you're seeing like version strings that aren't working, that would be a bug. Okay, thanks. Is there support for having uh, Drush Make update uh, the modules that's downloaded for you? So, you know, if I change a module from, you know, 7.1.1 uh, to 1.2 to have Drush Make download the new one. You mean if you edit the make file or it, if so you if run have, Drush up, have it edit the make file for you? I mean, if I go and edit the make file and say, okay, I want to get everything that's in here and leave the rest of it alone. There is a flag for Drush Make to only download specific projects. I forget what that flag is off the top of my head, but it should be in the help file. Would it, but is there something to say, you know, find the newer projects that have updates in the make file and download all those, or would I have to do it per project? You mean using something like Drush PM update? No, I mean just for downloading the modules themselves. That have just for it to know which ones have changed? Yeah, so I can say, you know, these five have changed since the last version of the make file. Download all these. It does not do that for you right now. Okay. Um, Are there any plans to do that? That would be a great patch. There, <laughs> people have talked about yeah, more I, integration with, I was just curious. with PM update. Okay. Thank you. There's definitely an open issue on that, and I can't remember all the discussion, but I think there was a reason why it was hard, so just maybe help out in that issue. Um, so in Drush Make, is there a way to now include a patch file let's say as part of the module in the Git repository so that when you make your site, you download a patch, let's say as part of the module or from Git and then you run it instead of setting it up, let's say in GitHub, making it a public repository and then getting the raw version of the patch. It's, are you talking about a private patch? I don't, I don't, I didn't fully understand the question. Uh, yeah, so one of the issues we ran into with Josh Make is actually, including patches in, let's say, our distribution. So, so when, when you get it out of GitHub, 
uh, that it runs the patch. I mean, is that possible to do now? You mean have it include the patch as part of like in the module directory? Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't do that yet. That's been on. I I would like it to do that. Actually, it does that for the local patches, just because a local patch in a make file is quite. If it's just referencing a file, that's not very useful. So it actually copies that. Um, so that's on the list of things to do, but it hasn't been done yet. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Hi, I don't know if there's a, a quick uh, suggestion for this one, but in terms of completions, I've noticed that if I have anything to the right of my um, prompt, um, like I'm editing an old command and I hit tab, for instance, I'm trying to complete uh, an alias, uh, I get all kinds of craziness on the screen and I have to reset the terminal. Do you, have you seen this before? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I, I did when I was building it, uh, but <laughs> um, okay, it's also Drush 5, so I'll upgrade to Drush 6 and see. Yeah, yeah, try upgrading if, if you don't, uh, you know, add a, add a bug and make sure you add, you know, what, what setup you're using, Absolutely. what with shell and so on. Uh. Um, does Drush Wrap have like a wild card so I can add all administrator permissions to the administrator role? Um, yeah, the question was about uh, role add permission. Um, and about wildcards. Um, I don't think that it has wildcard support like that. Um, Drupal has wildcard support-ish um, for an administrator role. But um, yeah, I don't think that we, we went quite that far with RAP. Yeah. OK, thank you, guys. I'm afraid this is a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, I'm not using Drush Make at all because um, it seems like something that you're going to use to provision, you know, a lot of websites based on a template or something. I'm not sure what purpose it really serves when you're maintaining one or, or you know, a few production sites and you're just maintaining them. Um, am I wrong? Or is there some use case? Yeah, we actually use it on every project, and some of the benefits you get are you won't see a massive commit that updated, say, 10 contrib modules, and then they did some custom code in the same commit, because contrib is just not part of the repository in the way we're using it. So even I would say if you're doing only one site, it's worth using um, because you're not your your repository at that point becomes much cleaner. You're only seeing your custom code, your custom theme, and then the make file, which is a few hundred lines long. Um, so when you're doing an update, you'll do drush make to, like, uh, it'll pull code from the Git repo instead of your own repo? Yeah, the, the way we use it, drush make, the file lives in the repository, and then it when we update modules, it, we rebuild out all the directories and everything. Um, was, is that your, th does that address your question? Or, I mean, you're, you're wondering if it's worth using just for one-offs. Well, I'm not sure. I'm, what we have right now is everything's in, in our repo, and we upgrade a module, so we commit, and then we yeah. pull on the production server. Um, you're saying I would use uh, a make file to do that instead? That, that's certainly one option. You can also use a make file and still keep everything in the repository. It allows another really good I mean, a, a make file provides a quick overview of the modules you're using. So even if you do check all of them into the repository, I'd argue that it's still worth worth using that to build out your modules and keep track of the versions and patches that you're using. Okay, thanks. I think part of the question was was uh, uh, around if I've got this right was about how you know, like if you have an existing site, how do you how do you deploy updates to that? Do you rebuild the site and switch symlinks or? That, that's how we do it. I mean, it takes a bit of doing to do that. There's not a lot of documentation about that um, in Drush Make itself. Um, but there are blog posts about, you know, sort of switching to that mindset of, you know, using a make file as basically your deployment mechanism rather than just a Git. Drush Make as provisioning system? Yeah. All right. Um, we're going to stick around and answer questions. People can just come right up to the desk here and, and we'll uh, answer questions. Last thing I want to remind people is please go ahead and uh, give us feedback. Um, go to the DrupalCon site slash schedule, find the what's new in Drush 6, and uh, please give us feedback. Thanks.